morning. Welcome to Luther Memorial Church and School. We're a member of the Church of Luther Confession, the CLC. And is Easter only a week ago? Seems like a lot longer than that already. But today we have our uh, song service as we follow Christmas with the song service. We're following Easter with the song service as we have the last couple of years. And we are going to be having our communion today at the Lord's Supper. So we're going to be doing that first and then going into our song service portion. So we'll be following the order of service as printed in your bulletin today. Before we begin, let us worship our Lord and come to him first in prayer. O Lord God, we come together to hear your holy word, that through the hearing of your word we may be brought to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and in death, and to grow day by day in your grace and holiness. Through these reasons, we are here again today to sing your praises and to glorify your holy name. Amen. We begin our Savior's worship song service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise for the scene of the first hymn, How Lovely Shines the Morning Star. God searches the heart, we confess our sins to him. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from conception. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin, and take away my guilt. Upon this confession of your sins, I announce the grace and peace of God to you. And by the authority and command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this whenever you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which was shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May this peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our distribution, while we will continue also by singing our distribution hymn, 3... 15 verses 1 through 14. We continue with the offering of thankful hearts, followed by our thanksgiving hymn in the bulletin.
O God of all grace, mercy, and peace, by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, you declared him to be your Son and our Savior. By the faithful testimony of the apostles, you have given us the confidence that our faith stands upon a most true and sure record. Grant to us the daily power of your Holy Spirit, through your word of truth, that our hearts may always rest on your sure promises. Preserve and defend us, O Lord, from all attacks upon our souls, so that we may firmly hold on to the profession of our faith. Deliver us from doubt and despair. Save us from false teaching. Unless useless and empty philosophies and the supposed wisdom of this world. Secure our hearts with your teaching, the spirit of truth and the mind of Christ. Move our hearts to daily desire the pure teaching and refreshing comfort of your word through the Holy Bible. Help us always to find Jesus in them with eyes of faith. Though we do not yet see him personally, lead us to love him more and more with joy inexpressible and full of glory receiving the goal of our faith, the salvation of our souls. Dear Lord, you know all the desires and needs in each heart. Give your loving attention to the supplications that arise to you from each believer. And if, in your wisdom, you have permitted a cross of trouble or sorrow to come into our lives, give us the confidence that you will not permit us to be tested beyond our ability, but that you will show us the way of escape, that we may be able to bear it, through you. Grant to all your people daily repentance and the full assurance of forgiveness in Christ. Strengthen the doubting and those who are weak in faith. Bring back the forgetful and the wayward and comfort the anxious and distressed. As we go from this blessed place today, grant us your peace, knowing confidently that you will come again to take us to be with you forever in heaven. All this we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. We rise for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our song service. (coughs) Does anyone have a choice to get things going? Yes, surely. 777. Out of tan supplement, hymn 777. Uh, Very wonderful and familiar hymn, Amazing Grace, as we know, uh, based off the words uh, in the Gospel of John where Jesus healed the blind man. And he said, of course, I was blind, but now I see, physically. But of course, knowing now his Savior, he could also say that spiritually as well, as we can today. So let's sing hymn 777, verse 1 and 3.
370. I believe 370 is, I know my faith, no, my hope is built on nothing less. Uh, we could obviously think of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount where he talked about the wise man building his house on the rock and this foolish man building his house on the sand. Of course, when we think about our faith, the reason we come to God's house, the reason we open our Bible is to continue to have the Lord built us on the sure and confident hope of our faith in Christ. and What he's able to do for us, not only in our lives, but in our death. As we continue to celebrate Easter, we remember that even in death, the Lord has power over this, those, death itself and gives us the confidence of eternal life. Verses 1 and 4 of hymn 370. Seven. Four forty seven is based off first Timothy chapter six. You know the chapter six of Timothy reminds us of uh, that common phrase is misunderstood that money is the root of all evil. Of course we know better the love of money is the root of all evil. So Paul reminds the young pastor Timothy to continue to focus on uh, the word of the Lord. And in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, Paul writes, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Let's sing verses 1 and 2. Two of him four forty seven.
Yes, Salome. Seven zero nine. Seven zero nine. Good Christmas hymn, God Loves Me Dearly. Uh, you can say it again and again, right? That's the chorus. We remember that the Lord teaches us this even in our youthful age, and what a wonderful hymn to sing even when we're on our deathbed. God loves me dearly. He grants me salvation. Let's sing verses 1 and 4. Forty-four. Seven forty-four. We think of uh, this familiar tune, "How Great Thou Art." It's very nice to think of Psalm eight, which reminds us how the Lord formed and framed the world and has given us so many blessings that we can enjoy—food and clothing and all the things that we need in this life. Of course, the Lord provides for them. And and so we can sing it to him of those needs supplied and that need of salvation supplied as well in our Savior and the need of eternal life. So let's sing of this in verse 1 and 3 of hymn 744. Mm-hmm.
back into the Easter section, hymn 203, Morning Breaks Upon the Tomb. I believe we read it last Sunday from the Gospel of Luke, fitting to read it again this morning in chapter 24. You hear those events on Easter morning. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. We'll sing all three verses of hymn 203. your hand high. I don't mean to pass people over. Uh, Carissa? 496? 496. 496. Next Sunday, we're we'll be selling, celebrating our mission festival, focusing on home missions. In other words, local outreach. That's you and that's me. Sharing the word of God in our community. What kind of response do we have when the Lord calls us, as he has called us to faith and has called us to share his word, to give comfort, to give the blessings that he has blessed us with to others? May we be and have the same response that we see here as Isaiah had. Let's sing verses 1 and 2 of 496.
Billy? Do you have one? I thought you raised one. Oh, sorry. Uh, Gabby? 785. Very comforting hymn we find in 785. Probably doesn't need much explanation. Let's sing. Any, let's sing verses 1 and 3 of 785. throw one in there myself. Uh, hymn 451, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Uh, it's based off Luke chapter 12. We were just talking about confessing our faith to uh, people in the world and sharing what God has done for us. Jesus said the same thing here. He reminds us that we want to make confession and not deny him like Peter did. But of course, Peter was forgiven. Chapter 12, verses 8 through 12. Jesus said, also I say to you, whoever confesses me before men, him the Son of Man also will confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But to him who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven. Now when they bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. That's definitely comforting as we share the Word of God, that as we learn and know the Word, we can share that confidence that the Spirit's going to give us what to say in the time of need. As we sing, stand up, stand for Jesus, let's sing verses 1 and 3. And this is our opportunity to stand, because we're going to sing a little bit longer after this. So... Please stand up for verses 1 and 3 of 451.
3.42, verses 1 and 2. Chief of sinners though I be are words almost directly quoted from Paul as he wrote to the Roman congregation. Remember that dialect that goes back and forth that Paul has, if I do what I know I should do, I don't do what I'm supposed to do. And he goes back and forth and it takes a lot of times to read that to really understand what he's saying. But Paul is making the point that he's wrestling with his sinful flesh. That new man the Spirit has put in us, we wrestle with day in and day out. And so when we think about our own sin, I know I can say, I am the chief of sinners. Because even though some of you have confessed different sins than me, they don't add up close to my own. Because who knows sin better than in our own lives? So we can confess with Paul, I am the chief of sinners. And see what Christ has done for us. Let's sing 342. What were the verses again? 1 and 2 of 342. children come, I don't believe oh come little children oh come one and all is that one in the hymnal does anyone know I don't think I don't think we have that one I'm sorry uh, I'll come back to you uh, Lester 410, 410. Jesus, lead thou on. I happen to still be in Luke here. Luke chapter 5, verse 11. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. How many of us have to say that? That we've done that? That we've forsaken everything to follow Jesus? Certainly there are times in our lives where we maybe had to forsake a family member. Maybe we've had to forsake a job. Oftentimes we think about job first rather than location. Is there a place to worship there? (coughs) What what are we willing to forsake to follow the Lord? Very fitting hymn as we look to our Lord to lead us in this life. Let's sing verses 1 and 4 of 410.
Austin. 783. I think in all four of the Gospels, there are accounts of Jesus depicting himself as shepherd. Of course, we know that's also true from Psalm 23, that Jesus is our shepherd, and not to be confused that we don't want him, but that he is enough. He is all that we need. What a wonderful hymn that reminds us that we don't have to wander through this life aimlessly. Our Lord, our Savior, our Good Shepherd directs and leads us through his word. And of course, leads us to our eternal pasture with him in heaven. Which is why we continue to celebrate Easter and what that means for us. Let's sing verses 1, 3, and 5 of 783. Probably go about ten more minutes, Florida. Six five one and the four. Six fifty one verse four. <clears throat> Be still, my soul. Very wonderful hymn. I know I often sing that hymn uh, to those who are in the hospital or on their deathbed. What a wonderful, comforting hymn based off Psalm 46. One of my confirmation verses that we had to learn. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains shake with the swelling, though the rocks and hills be removed. We know God is in the midst of her, Jerusalem, his people, and we know that he continues to give peace when he says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in all the earth. The Lord our God, the Lord of hosts, is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let's sing of that in 651, verse 4.
I just want to make another comment after that hymn. Whenever I think of what God said in Psalm 46, Be still and know that I am God, I also think of Jesus' words when he calmed the winds and the waves. Be still. He said, peace, be still. And he said that the disciples, who we know during this time, were very frantic and very much concerned and knowing that they were being persecuted, Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. So we can also say, when Jesus says to us, peace, be still. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. He gives it to us freely. He gives it to us when we don't deserve it. The peace he gives with us is the comfort and calmness that our souls can have. That we have eternal life. It is ours. We have the crown of life now. And we just wait for him to come and call us home. So peace. Be still. Another choice. Linda. Uh, 400. 400. We often sing 400 for the offertory when we do the offering of thankful hearts. What a wonderful hymn that reminds us of what our life can be now as Christians. As the Lord directs it, we'll ask the Lord to take our life. Take everything a part of it. Let everything, let every part of our being serve the Lord. Everything that we have is a trust from Him. That's why we're called stewards of the manifold of God's grace. Hymn 400, let's sing verses 1 and 3 and... I heard someone say 6. That sounds good. 1, 3, and 6 of hymn 400. the whole time. 53? There's various good hymns uh, in the Red Hymnal especially that we use to close the service. Um, 53 is another good one as well. A uh, reminder too, Luke 24, 29, I believe is the section of the disciples uh, wa- um, and Jesus walking on the road to Emmaus. And of course, when they got to the home, that they asked Jesus to stay and abide with them, where he revealed to them uh, who he was. What a wonderful thing it is today for us to be here and see how Jesus reveals to us himself again in word and song. And so when it comes to this evening, we can also pray, Lord, abide with us throughout the night and throughout our lives as you are, are with us. In 53, let's sing verse 1. And six.
We'll pick one more. I will pick Titus, otherwise we'll hear about it for the rest of the day. Yes, Titus? I can't hear you a little bit louder, buddy. 202. Easter one. Welcome, happy morning. Wonderful hymn to sing around Easter time, but of course it's true that we can sing this every day. No reason to be discouraged, no reason to have sad hearts when we wake up in the morning. We know from Ecclesiastes, each day the Lord's mercies are new, His compassions fail not. And so we too, because of our risen Savior, can welcome every happy morning because of what Christ has done for us. Let's sing verse 1 of hymn 202. Please rise. And with believing hearts, receive the blessing of our Lord God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. Amen. Let's close by the singing of hymn 309 in the red hymnal, or as on the projector. going to mention uh, welcome to all of you here today. Ushers, you could have remained in the back. Uh, we're going to allow you to leave at your own leisure because I want those of you who I wasn't able to choose today, come up and write the hymn choice that you wanted on the sheet here. 
I'm going to do something a little bit differently to, uh, over the next couple of months, Lord willing. Uh, we're going to try to sing all of the hymns that we selected today, you know, one a service for the next couple of months. So if you didn't get called on today, I'm sorry. Come up and write your hymn choice up here. And we'll try to sing it in the next few months. Um, that's why I think it's easier to not have the ushers usher you out. Just come on up as you have the ability. I'll greet you in the back as we have an opportunity. But we'll visit with each other and catch up on how things are going. Uh, a couple of announcements in the bulletin to call your attention to here. Uh, their um, elders meeting uh, will not be a week from Tuesday. It will be next Sunday after the church service. Uh, so just a reminder of that. Elders meeting next Sunday after the church service. Also, uh, Tuesday night we have council. And uh, there's a note there in the bulletin of the upcoming kindergarten roundup. As I mentioned earlier, next Sunday is our mission festival Sunday. There's no potluck or anything like that. Pastor Wayne Eichstead is coming over uh, to guest preach and possibly do Bible class too. So hope you can make Bible class at 9 um, if we're able to do that. Uh, I think there was one more announcement that I didn't have written down. Anybody else have any other announcements for today? May the Lord continue to be with you and bless you as we celebrate every morning the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, which means the same for us. The Lord is with you.